They called it the Detroit Diesel 20V 149, but for those who operated it, it was simply the beast. Pumping out over 7,000 pound-feet of torque, it was a mechanical masterpiece built for extreme conditions. Yet despite its brilliance, this engine couldn't survive the test of time. Why did Detroit Diesel's ultimate creation fall from glory? Let's uncover the story. Detroit Diesel may have built its name on the groundbreaking 20V 149, but the story begins decades earlier with a small and simple engine called the Series 7. First introduced in 1938, the Series 71 quickly became the backbone of countless industries. Its secret, a modular two-stroke design that made it powerful, reliable, and easy to maintain. Exactly what businesses needed during a time of rapid industrial growth. It wasn't just an engine, it was a solution to a range of problems, from powering buses and trucks to running industrial equipment. This engine family proved so versatile that you'd find it just about anywhere, from the mines to the military. The genius of the Series 71 71 wasn't size, it was simplicity. Each cylinder displaced 71 cubic inches, and the engine operated on a straightforward two-stroke principle. That two-stroke design, which burns fuel with every revolution, meant higher power output for its size compared to the four-stroke engines of the time. In places where downtime wasn't an option, reliability mattered more than anything else. Operators loved the accessibility of the components. Mechanics could swap out cylinders, liners, and pistons without tearing down the whole engine, making repairs faster, cheaper, and less specialized. It was this philosophy of modularity, performance, and serviceability that became the cornerstone of Detroit Diesel's reputation. And it didn't stop there. As industries evolved through the post-war years, demands grew, and so did Detroit Diesel's ambitions. By the 1960s, the Series 71 was beginning to show its age. Heavy equipment, larger marine vessels, and increasingly powerful generators pushed the limits of the Series 71's capabilities. In response, Detroit Diesel and engineers introduced the Series 92, a logical extension of the same design principles, but scaled up. With cylinders that displaced 92 cubic inches each, this engine family offered more horsepower and torque to meet those rising requirements. It was a hit, particularly with industries that valued both ruggedness and reliability. From oil fields to commercial fishing vessels, these engines powered progress on land and sea. Still, a challenge loomed on the horizon. The demands of industries that depended on large-scale power were outpaced what even the Series 92 could provide. Larger engines already existed to handle heavy applications, but they came with their own issues. These massive machines were often inefficient and difficult to work on. Detroit Diesel saw an opportunity. If a successful design like the Series 92 could be scaled up without losing what made it special, the company could offer a powertrain solution like no other. This was the moment when Detroit Diesel's engineers started to push the boundaries of displacement and power, ultimately leading to the 149 series. You might be wondering about the name 149. It's actually a nod to the engine's displacement per cylinder, 149 cubic inches. That's nearly double the size of the Series 92 and more than twice as large as the original Series 71. When paired with the company's proven two-stroke system, 149 cubic inches per cylinder promised power on an entirely different scale. Each cylinder became a powerhouse in its own right. And like their smaller counterparts, these larger engines maintained the philosophy of modularity. This wasn't an engine designed designed to sit in a corner of a workshop gathering dust. It was built to work hard and last long. The leap from the Series 92 to the 149 Series wasn't seamless, though. Larger engines brought unique challenges. Cooling systems had to be reimagined to handle the heat generated by demanding operations. Structural integrity needed reinforcement to prevent stress fractures under load. Even the assembly process had to evolve to accommodate the scale of the components. But Detroit Diesel wasn't just scaling an engine. It was reinforcing a design legacy. Crucially, all the lessons learned from the smaller series 71 and 92 were baked into the DNA of the 149 series. The layout remained modular, and parts like pistons and liners could still be replaced individually, meaning repairs in remote or rugged locations didn't require special tools or facilities. Even though this engine family was massive, it was still engineered for ease of use. Think of it like taking the same recipe you trust and scaling it from a single serving to a banquet-sized feast. Every ingredient, raw power, simplicity, and reliability remained intact but supercharged. By the late 1960s, Detroit Diesel was ready to unveil the 149 series, a game changer in the world of industrial engines. This series wasn't just about scaling up. It was about redefining what diesel engines could do. At this point, the company wasn't looking to meet demands. It was looking to exceed them, creating engines that delivered consistent power for applications where failure wasn't an option. From the start, the 149 series was aimed at heavy-duty marine vessels, massive generators, 
computers and large-scale industrial machines, the kind of equipment that powered progress on an infrastructural level. But scaling up to a 20-cylinder engine wasn't just ambitious, it was unprecedented. What kinds of technical challenges did Detroit Diesel need to overcome? More importantly, how did they design a beast like the 20V149 to perform so reliably under enormous stress? To answer that, we need to explore the innovative design choices that made it a mechanical marvel. What does it take to bring a mechanical giant like the 20V149 to life? Let's start with its extraordinary framework. This behemoth wasn't just another engine scaled up for size. Its 20-cylinder V configuration, with cylinders arranged at a 60-degree angle, was packed into an innovative three-block design. Most engines of this size used a single massive block, but Detroit diesel engineers went against convention. Instead, they opted for a modular setup featuring two six-cylinder banks on the sides and a central eight-cylinder block in the middle. At this scale, such a choice wasn't just clever. It solved specific challenges tied to building, cooling, and maintaining something this large. By dividing the engine into smaller manageable sections, Detroit Diesel maintained the practicality they were famous for. So why not just build a single block? It comes down to engineering and logistics. A one-piece engine at this size would have presented critical obstacles in manufacturing, requiring specialized equipment to cast and machine it. A unified block also would have amplified heat-related problems, making cooling a nightmare. By splitting it into three blocks, Detroit Diesel created dedicated cooling paths for each section, reducing the risk of overheating. They also made servicing much easier. Instead of dismantling a gigantic engine as a single unit, operators could work on individual sections without taking the entire machine offline. In environments where every minute of downtime costs money, like an oil field or a marine vessel, that kind of modularity wasn't just nice to have, it was essential. The use of a 60-degree V angle was another smart decision. Engines with uneven or sharper angles can struggle with balance, leading to vibrations that wear down components faster or cause inefficiency. At 60 degrees, the 20V149 kept the perfect balance for smooth operation, even at full throttle. This wasn't just about comfort. It ensured that the engine could handle punishing workloads for extended periods without suffering from vibration-induced failures. For an engine that displaced a staggering 149 cubic inches per cylinder, maintaining stability wasn't negotiable, it was critical for survival. And we have to talk about that 149 cubic inch displacement per cylinder. With a bore and stroke of 5.75 inches by 5.75 inches, the 20V149 achieved what's known as a square stroke ratio. Why does that matter? A square ratio optimizes the balance between power and efficiency, ensuring consistent combustion pressure and steady power output. This is crucial for the conditions this engine was built for. Long duty cycles and rolls where power delivery couldn't afford to falter. Think about operating non-stop week after week. That's where this ratio worked its magic. But the brilliance of the design didn't end with its performance specs. The modularity of the 20V149 extended far beyond its three-block structure. Every component, from pistons to injectors, was designed to be interchangeable and field serviceable. Each cylinder had its own head, allowing for individual cylinder maintenance without disturbing the rest of the engine. For remote locations, whether offshore or deep in industrial zones, this was a game changer. Mechanics only needed common tools to make on-site repairs, avoiding the need for costly, specialized mechanics or parts. Even better, Detroit Diesel designed many of the 20 V149's components to work with other engines in their lineup. Parts such as injectors, governors, and filters were shared with smaller Detroit Diesel engines, a decision that lowered costs for operators. If a part failed in one engine, chances were good the replacement was already sitting on the shelf. For industries operating in isolated locations, where logistics were complicated, this level of standardization saved time and money. It's easy to see why the 20V149 became a trusted workhorse in the environments where it was deployed. Cooling an engine like this presented a unique challenge, but Detroit Diesel came prepared. The 20V149 featured a high-capacity water-cooled system with dual water pumps to ensure efficient circulation across all three blocks. Auxiliary heat exchangers could be added depending on the application to further handle high thermal loads. Meanwhile, the lubrication system used a wet sump configuration, high-volume oil pumps, and robust cooling to keep moving parts running smoothly under the immense mechanical stresses of continuous operation. Whether it was running a turbine in a power plant or powering a freighter across the sea, the 20V149 was built to endure 24-7 workloads without skipping a beat. Then there was the fuel system. Detroit Diesel stayed true to its signature unit injector design, equipping one injector per cylinder for precise fuel delivery. These mechanically driven injectors, synchronized with the camshaft, ensured consistent fuel metering and combustion 
timing. The 20V149 also featured a governor to manage load and keep performance steady under varying conditions. Whether the engine was running at its peak or idling momentarily, the system balanced output efficiently. In high-stress environments, this balance was vital. Reliability wasn't optional here. Ultimately, the 20V149 wasn't just another engine. It was Detroit Diesel's response to the industries that demanded both innovation and rugged practicality. While its size and power were unmatched, what truly made it stand out was its adaptability. This was a giant of engineering designed to perform in punishing conditions where lesser machines would collapse. But raw power is one thing. How did it actually perform when put to the test? That's where this engine's reputation as a beast really came to life. The 20 V149 wasn't just big, it was an absolute powerhouse. At its peak, this engine produced over 2,900 horsepower while generating more than 7,000 pound-feet of torque. To put it simply, it didn't just move heavy machinery, it dominated any job that called for unrelenting mechanical force. But raw numbers like these tell only part of the story. What made it truly remarkable was its ability to sustain operation at around 1,800 RPM, a pace that capitalized on its displacement and torque curve to deliver performance that could go on for days or even weeks without a break. This was an engine built for endurance under the most punishing conditions. For an engine of this size, breathing efficiently is no small task. The 20V149 had to move immense amounts of air through its 20 cylinders to keep up with its massive output. Traditional approaches would have struggled, so Detroit Diesel combined old-school ingenuity with cutting-edge systems of the time. This engine utilized three roots-type blowers to perform scavenging, a process critical to two-stroke engines. These blowers cleared out exhaust gases while packing the cylinders with fresh air. On top of that, six turbochargers took over to significantly boost the intake pressure, delivering even more oxygen for combustion under heavy loads. Together, this highly coordinated airflow system ensured the engine could handle extremes without choking out. And it wasn't just about power, it was about consistency, no matter how intense the workload. Even with all this engineering brilliance, feeding an engine like this came with its own set of problems. Under full load, the 20V149 burned through diesel fuel at a staggering rate, easily consuming hundreds of gallons in a single day. This kind of thirst made it impractical in applications where fuel efficiency was a priority. Instead, it thrived in scenarios where uptime, reliability, and brute force mattered more than the diesel bill. Whether it was exhilarating or concerning depends on your perspective, but this fuel-heavy appetite was the price of such overwhelming capability. For operators, it often meant installing auxiliary fuel systems or planning fuel logistics carefully, especially in remote deployments. The sound of a working 20 V149 might surprise anyone unfamiliar with its reputation. As the 20 cylinders fired, revolution after revolution, the engine roared in a way that was unmistakable. Even among diesel engines, which are known for their distinct growl, the sound of the 20 V149 stood out. Described as seismic, it was both deep and powerful, a rhythmic thunder that resonated across construction sites, industrial yards, and marine engine rooms. For those lucky enough to witness it in operation, there was no doubting the presence of a true mechanical giant. And in some cases, the sound was more than just an auditory experience. It became a symbol of heavy-duty power in the environments where it was deployed. On land, the engine's abilities shone in oil fields, where it powered high-pressure pumps for hydraulic fracturing. These pumps demanded immense, around-the-clock horsepower to inject liquids into subterranean rock layers. Mounted on rugged skid systems or within trailers, the 20V149 could endure the harsh conditions of oil field operations, kicking up dust and taking on punishing heat without flinching. Its modular design, as we mentioned earlier, made field servicing in such remote locations not just possible but practical. This reliability kept operations running smoothly when downtime simply wasn't an option. The industrial world had uses for the 20V149 beyond energy and shipping. The engine powered critical municipal systems like floodwater pumps, where it moved millions of gallons per hour to protect low-lying areas during storms. In agriculture, vast irrigation systems in regions lacking electrical infrastructure relied on these engines to sustain crops over long periods. These roles highlighted its adaptability and ability to deliver consistent results in diverse environments. No matter the task, the engine lived up to its nickname, the Beast. Ultimately, the nickname wasn't just about its force. The 20V149 proved its worth in some of the toughest environments imaginable. It pushed massive tugboats through rough waters, powered hydraulic fracturing rigs in remote oil fields, and energized industrial generators that lit up entire facilities. From marine vessels to dry docks and pump stations, its primary applications were a perfect match for its immense torque and endurance. In places,
cases where engines needed to work around the clock, the 20V149's ability to handle constant stress made it a front runner. However, as unstoppable as it seemed, even this engine couldn't outrun the practical limitations and technological advancements of its time. Let's start with one of its biggest drawbacks, fuel consumption. For all its brute strength, the 20V149 was an undeniable guzzler. Under a heavy workload, it burned through hundreds of gallons of diesel in a single day. Back when fuel costs were less prohibitive, this was viewed as a trade-off for performance. But by the 1980s and 1990s, rising fuel prices started to change the equation for many operators. Running one of these engines became a major expense, particularly for industries trying to tighten budgets or optimize efficiency. On top of that, the noise it generated could be deafening, especially in confined spaces like engine rooms. While this wasn't always a deal breaker, it was another challenge operators had to consider. And then there were emissions. The two-stroke design, which helped give the 20V149 its legendary power delivery, came with a downside, inefficiency in fuel combustion. This inefficiency resulted in high levels of unburned hydrocarbons, particulate emissions, and nitrogen oxides, problems that were eventually targeted by regulations. In the late 1980s, the environment Environmental Protection Agency introduced stricter emission standards for diesel engines in two-stroke designs like the 20V149 suddenly found themselves in a precarious position. Retrofitting the engine to meet even the earliest Tier 1 standards was incredibly difficult. Attempts to make it compliant often compromised its performance, undermining the very reason it was so valuable. The Detroit Diesel 20V149 wasn't just an engine. It was a bold declaration of what could be achieved when sheer power took precedence. Its engineering pushed boundaries, building a diesel machine capable of dominating the harshest industrial and marine settings without compromise. Even today, it holds a strange but respected place in the history of diesel engines, remembered as an unmatched emblem of mechanical ambition. So what other forgotten mechanical marvels are out there waiting for their stories to be told? Let us know in the comments. The 20V149 may have roared its last, but its legacy reminds us of an era where bigger truly meant better.